Welcome to Retired Time Productions. In the previous video, which was part 5 of this Multiplex Twin Star FPV build series, we laid out the wiring on the bench for the vector and then programmed the Tyrannus radio, configured the Easy UHF receiver, then bound them together, then we went ahead and configured the vector. And now we're going to install all these components into the fuselage of the Multiplex Twin Star. As far as component placement, this is what I have so far. I've just mounted the Easy UHF receiver right here with a 20 centimeter SMA cable that goes back to a 90 degree bend and then I have my 433 megahertz LRS antenna right here and uh, up in here the rest of the components have not been mounted. I've got the vector right here. I think I'll probably just put it right there. Power module will probably have to go somewhere here so the battery can be connected and the ESCs can be connected. And then I got the GPS. I'll probably just mount that up on top here behind the wing somewhere. Maybe cut a little notch in the foam. I don't know. This is my UBEC. that's powering my servo bus. So I'll probably just mount that in here is what I'm thinking. I also removed the extra wires off here since I'm using the uh, serial PPM. Just need this one cable. I removed the extra wires off that plug and I'll show you that. Since I'm just using the serial PPM cable right here on the aileron, I'm going to remove these other wires because they just look uh, kind of messy dangling inside the fuselage. So I'm just recording this as a record of how they actually were configured. There we go. So if I ever need to put them back, that's how they were. And I think the mode one here is actually underneath. And then the other yellow ones are on top. So I removed all of the wires, except the aileron wire, by lifting up these tabs with a pin and then just uh, sliding each wire out. And so that's what it looks like with the wires removed and just the aileron cable left. So I want to place the vector down here, right here under the wing. And what I've done is cut a little piece of foam out right here so I can put in this piece of plywood, which is about that big for the vector to sit on. So I cut this piece out right there and then slotted it down in here for the plywood. So now I can get half of the plywood in the bottom part like that, glue it in, and then I've done the same thing on this half. Here, cut a piece out of that and slotted it so it'll go right on. So the vector should sit on the platform, something like that, once I'm done. It's pretty close to the center of gravity. A little below the wing, but I don't think that'll hurt. I'm going to use some of this clear, thin, transparent velcro to hold the vector down and uh, this may be just temporary but this stuff's really thin so it won't let the vector wiggle and uh, I'm going to mount it onto its plywood backing. I'm just using a little bit of uh, super glue and a piece of rubber hose to spread the super glue out onto this board and that'll help the uh, velcro stick to the wood. This seals up the pores in the wood and makes it so the Velcro can really stick to it. So you can see the plywood platform down inside the fuselage there. And it looks like the vector will have to mount just to the left of this line right here. That'd be the center line. Now the reason I wanted to keep this area above the vector open was to allow space for all these wires from the wing to fold up in that area. If I put the vector up near the bottom of the wing there just wouldn't be room to hook up the battery and the servos. That's why I left that room and put the vector near the bottom. 
Now I think I'm going to use a little bit of the welder glue to glue the 5 volt UBEC right here, like that, about halfway into the fuselage, so it'll be on both halves. So here is the UBEC being glued in place with a clamp on it, and the wire just runs around over here to feed 5 volts to the output bus on the vector, and then the input to it is right here. I just put the wire down in this groove, and this will go to the power module. The hook side of the Velcro is now put on the plywood. Now let's go ahead and put the vector on there. And here goes the placement. And of course it would be easy to remove later if we have to move it. So this is what I have so far. We got the UBIC, the receiver, easy UHF, and the vector all in place now. Now I want to talk about some access hatches. Now here's my other part of the body right here and what I did was I cut into that and made two access hatches. So I got one right here and then I got one back here. So what I did was I cut the top of the hatches right along this groove right here where the uh, servo cable would normally go but I'm not using that because my servos are back here so I just use that as a place to put the top edge and then you can see I cut a little bevel here for the side that's going to seat and then the other side is less of a, an angle for where the hinges are going to go so it'll be hinged like this just like that and also there was a little groove right here where that channel, this channel here, used to be. You can see it better on this piece. You can see how that, where that channel was and there's a little groove there and I caught it. So what I did was on this one, and I'll do the same on the other, is I just put a little piece of Depron in there. I don't know if you can see it right there. I glued a little piece of Depron on that piece to fill that gap and that'll protect that ridge from breaking off and I'm going to do the same thing to this one just use some CA to glue a little piece of Depron on talking about this kind of foam here it doesn't have any cardboard backing on it it's just Depron I think it might be three millimeter two millimeter I don't know you can use different sizes on depending on what you need Welder's glue will not work with Depron, so you have to use CA. So that gives me access to the receiver area and where the vector is located in case I have to make any changes. And of course I can always get to it, the vector from the top as well. So I'm just using my CA glue here to glue on the piece of Depron to fill that little gap with. So there it is glued onto the foam right there. And then we can just go ahead and insert it into the compartment door like that so here's what the hatches look like on the opposite side right here and you can see where I've cut them out I also put a little piece of popsicle stick right here to uh, reinforce this bulkhead right here and I've got a little popsicle sticks here just to keep the door from collapsing in now I'm going to use my Dubro pin hinges here uh, to hinge these doors. And the trick is that since these hinges won't close, they won't go completely shut like that, you can't just stick them in like you would on a regular door and put one side on one side and the other on the door. Uh, instead, what I have to do, and I've already done it on this one over here, but I'll just show you this one. What I've actually done is taken an X-Acto blade and gone in on an angle right through here instead of gluing it down to the surface. I mean you could just glue it flat like this but then the hinge would show. So what I did was go in on an angle. I don't know if you can see this but that hinge is actually going in on an angle like that. So it doesn't have to close completely flat. 
And then I do the same thing on the other side, on, on the door. So on the door, I also went in on an angle. And if you can see that, that's going in on an angle too. So now the hinge is completely hid, both underneath and on top. All you see is the hinge line right there. And then I just glued in with a little of the welder's glue. And here's the finished product right here, all glued in. I got a little piece of tape on here just to, so I can grab a hold of it. But the magnets could be added, but there it is. I also added a third hatch on the other side of the fuselage so that I can get to the servo wire connections. So next is the power module. And what I've done is cut a little well down in the foam right here and made it deep enough so the power module will go in. And I'm going to use these slots that are already here for the wires to slide into. So I'm going to put it right down in there like that. And then this wire will come up here to the wing. Now it's kind of a tight fit in here so what I did was on the wing I put a 90 degree bend on the uh, XT60 connector from the cable so that'll plug right onto here and still have plenty of room. So that's what it looks like plugged in. I'll still have plenty of room to pull the wire out, plug it in, and then seat the wing. So I decided to mount the GPS right here in front of the vertical stabilizer like that and uh, I got eight satellites down here in the basement. Seems to be working and I just ran the wire down through here to the vector right there. Also I added a little extension cable, a USB extension cable to the vector so it'll be easy to get to the USB port. And that looks like this right here. And it came from yourcablestore.com in California. Also I found I could hook my pan tilt servo up to 7 and 8 on my Easy UHF receiver without doing any more configuring to the Easy UHF. I just plug these wires on here and then I can use my knobs on the radio. I just used channel 7 and 8 on the radio. So that works. And the final thing I did was cut all of this foam out of the nose section. So this well is bigger right in here, wider actually, so I can fit up to a 5,000 4 cell battery, which looks something like this. So that's my layout so far. So if any of you got any comments or suggestions on this, let me know. Just leave a comment under the video. And uh, if you're not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Give your like.